Municipal Aid, regular board of the meeting, Salado Municipal Building, 301 North Stagecoast, Salado, Texas, March 17, 2019. May the minutes read that it is 631. Call to order, please. Here. Here. I'm asking too much. So let me add more to your plate by saying, speak to America. In your name I pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Stebbins, 1206 Ambrose Drive, Slato, Texas. There's really just, just this will only take a couple seconds. One, we've had power outages on February 9th, when it was real cold, uh, March 6th, and March, what's today? 7th. Okay, 5th and 6th. So we had three, three outages. Uh, and some of them were hours long, some of them were a few minutes, and then they go on and off and on and off and on. My request is I'd like to see if the city can find out from Encore what is going on. I mean, if, if we're having these problems when it's cold, I hate to think what's going to happen when it's really hot outside. So that was that was one question. And then the other question is I had been up here a few months ago and I was talking about a house along uh, uh, Chisholm Trail. 
that has been gone is, is just kind of sitting there and it's not being built, it's not doing anything. And I know that you were working on that, but it, nothing has happened significantly. So it's not done. So anyway, I'd like to throw that over to you. Maybe you can figure that out. Thanks. Mayor, mine was for now. Yes, I'll see you. Oh, okay. Santa Rosa. Where's the sanctuary? In about 60 days, two aldermen, Mr. McDougall and Mr. Jackson, will be giving up their seats and three new aldermen will take their places. 300 acres of land have been promised sewer usage, may suddenly, and that land may suddenly, be sold and developed with hundreds of dwellings. Many have said to me, oh, Billy Hanks Jr. will never build anything. He doesn't have to, but the village is still under contract to provide sewer to any builder like D.R. Horton or more likely Carruthers. Mr. Hanks can sell his land to anyone and anyone he sells it to gets the same deal uh, that these existing aldermen have agreed to. Uh, my concerns are for the future developer of welfare village residents must support. I've also been told by a number of people that young families can't afford the houses in the village. I guess the intention is to create affordable housing. I can name at least 10 young families that have moved into the village in the past few years. So who are the families who cannot afford to move to Salado? My daughter could not afford a house in Austin, so she's had to move a half an hour out of Austin and commute. There is a real world, and there are many places in the world where most Saladians could not afford to live. I own a cabin in Maine that I could not afford to buy today in the, this market. As far as the developer welfare being promised at the corner of Royal and Smith Branch, what is the rush? Where are the people who want affordable housing? Do they care at all? about where are all the children who may live in those 171 houses going to play? Why haven't our leaders and our office staff amended our ordinance to require green space? Do we desperately need cash instead of kindness? Thank you. This is resolution number R-2019-02. Resolution of the Board of Aldermen of the Village of Salado, Texas, recognizing the public service rendered by Larry Robertson to the Village of Salado and its residents. Whereas, in September 2016, Larry Robertson, having been appointed by the Salado Board of Aldermen, assumed the office of Commissioner of the Salado Planning and Zoning Commission from September 2016 to March 2019. And whereas, in addition to his years of service on the Planning and Zoning Commission, Larry Robertson, has been an active member 
of the Salado Street Improvements Committee, Ordinance Committee, Wastewater Committee, and Comprehensive Plan Update Committee. And whereas, in addition to his volunteer service on village boards and commissions, Larry Robertson worked tirelessly with the village's leadership and the Texas Department of Transportation to resolve critical issues with the Interstate 35 Improvement Project, which adversely impacted Salado and its economy. And whereas Larry Robertson has been an active participant in numerous community activities, including lending his understanding spirit and voice to the Salado Community Chorus and its annual Christmas concert. And whereas his wholehearted participation in many related government and community functions have earned him the respect of the village of Salado and left a lasting mark on this community. And now, therefore, we have resolved by the Board of Aldermen of the village of Salado, Texas, acting for and on behalf of the citizens of Salado, that we thereby express our sincere appreciation and thanks for Larry Ross for his distinguished service to the community. Highly commend him for the manner in which he has carried out his duties and responsibilities and extend our best wishes in the years to come. Adopted un anonymously the seventh day of March, 2019, Village of Salado, Texas, by Skip Lancet, Mayor. Boy, that's pretty good.
before Larry goes, Michael would like to say something. Let me say one more thing about this guy that you all do not know. It, the mayor mentioned about the Interstate Highway out here, mentioned about that. What he didn't say is that the Street and Improvement Committee had part of that as their responsibility. To make sure that thing kept rolling out there. We had that job and it was not rolling out there like it should be. So this committee, you know, we've got to make an impact on this thing. We, we've got to do something. We don't know what. Let's do something to get this thing going like it should be. The street committee have been around this table right here for over two years. Every week on the Thursday or Tuesday, not that it matters, on, you know, Tuesday, Right. And we saw very quickly that the wrong guy was chairing this committee, and the wrong guy happened to be me. I, I had nowhere the, the knowledge that this guy right here, here had. And many of the things that you see out there were because of Larry Robertson saying the tech stop. But what about the power over there at Bridge 62? I don't see any power over there. And that's just one example. And guess what? That power showed up. And many other things like that happened because of Larry Robertson's knowledge and his willingness to sit around this table over two years, two hours a week, to make sure that their feet were held to the fire, as we say. Tech Stop became a whole lot better organization when that happened. Frequent talking talkings to by Larry Robertson. So don't think that that was done by anybody else. Not the governor, not anybody else. Larry Robertson made sure that that happened. And he checked on it to make sure that it did happen. So I want you to know that he live in Texas. Don't think he can't get something done if he did it in Slavery, Texas. Did you know that? Uh, yes, because I was in other meetings. That's right, he did. Yes. But really, that, that, he's, a, he's a great guy, but he gets things done. So I want you to know that. Additionally, five properties on Van Biver have fences in the front yard. 
Attached is a site plan depicting uh, the existing fence, which is the black hashed line, and the proposed fence is the red hashed line. Notice that the public hearing was published in the Salado Village Voice on Thursday, February 21st, 2019. Additionally, six property owners within 200 feet of the request were notified. Six responses came back all in favor for granting the variance. There are conditions required for granting a variance. Um, I'll go over those with you briefly, that there are special circumstances or conditions affecting the land involved, such that the strict application of the provision of this ordinance would deprive the applicant of the reasonable use of the land, and that the variance is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of a substantial property right of the applicant, and that the granting of the variance will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, or welfare, or injurious to other property within the area, and that the granting of the variance will not have the effect of preventing the orderly use of other land within the area in accordance with the provisions of this ordinance. I've also uh, given you some pictures. Uh, you'll see the existing fence, as I said, uh, on the southern border. There's also pictures of the neighbor's fence, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have of me right now. Very, very quickly, just to add in, if it's your desire to approve this after you go through the public hearing, and you have your discussion if you desire to approve that. Any motion to approve this will require at least four votes in favor, number one. But number two, it also will require, as part of that motion, an affirmative finding on each one of those items that was just listed. Uh, so it'll be a combined motion. Combined motion for each one of those. Yes, sir. And by the way, this is, there are two, there are two things that will come before the board of all tonight. This is one of them, and the second public hearing will follow that. So right now, I'm going to take this out of the regular Board of Alderman meeting. We're going into a public hearing. If you've never been to a public hearing, this is what happens. I will call number one. If no one comes, I'll let a, a significant amount of time pass, then I'm going to call number two. And then I'll do the same thing and call number three. At the end of number three, I will close the public hearing. It is the same <coughs> as citizens' comments. Three minutes, talk to us. Say what you need to say. And sir, before you open the public hearing, just to let you know the applicant is here. So after the public hearing, if you have questions of him, he's here to <coughs> address you as well. Say that again. The applicant is here, so if you have questions of him. Introduce the applicant to us. Sure. Um, Mr. Sandor, if you would please, this is Alan Sandor, he's the applicant for 501 Van Biver, and uh, I, I believe he'd like to present his case to you as well. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, thank you for, for taking a look at this for me. I, uh, I really don't have anything um, substantial to add beyond what Chrissy has already given you. I think what I'm asking to do is to continue um, the improvement that I've already made on the property. I think uh, most of the most of the property seen are new home <clears throat> on Van Denver. If you've been down the road, you probably didn't miss it. Um, I think it's going to be. Uh, I'm just going to extend what was actually already there. At one point in time, you should have a picture that shows you that there was a fence, uh, the three rail pipe fence used to cross that property, and at some point it was torched off. I don't know why. And uh, I just want to put it back, and then I want to put a, a gate in that just matches it. It's not going to uh, be a uh, elaborate gate with a bunch of design or anything like that. I'm just trying to continue the, uh, the, the old ranch or modern farm look that was, was there at some point in time that we're trying to bring back to that property. That's about it. Alan, which, which of the houses is yours there So I am just south of Fred Brown's Long Crate Myrtle covered driveway. Just to the south. So it's the new house. It's just the Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. In front of Fred Brown. Yes, sir.
Yes, sir. And those, um, the 21 feet is well within, we require a 15 feet uh, from the, the property line, so he's within that as well. Vehicular access gates are required to be 25 feet from the property line, so he's within that. Any other questions? Then I shall entertain a motion, please. Your Honor, I motion that we uh, approve this uh, a variance as submitted to the uh, Board of Adjustment. With an affirmative finding on all conditions required. With an affirmative By findings me. on all conditions required. All conditions required. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Now, gentlemen, we can go into a discussion. The discussion is open. I think it just blends in with uh, all the other property around there. I think uh, what he's done with his property is commendable. I don't see any reason why I will not be voting against uh, this uh, variance. Other discussion, please. existing slab located in the front yard of his property. Generally, it's at the corner of San Pedro Road and San Juan Road. The slab is existing prior to 1996. When Mr. Quintanilla bought the property, the slab was there. I did receive a copy of the survey from the title company. I also spoke with a lady from the title company. The survey is um, very, very hard to read, so some of the numbers that I'm giving you are approximate and based off of my measurements when I went out there. Um, the zoning ordinance does not allow for accessory buildings in front of the main structure, the residence. Additionally, this property is zoned single family residential, which has a minimum front yard setback of 25 feet. Um, this slab, as it exists today, is approximately 10 to 15 feet from the property line in the front. It does meet the side setback as well within the side setback, but we are asking for encroachment into the front setback. Um, the current slab, again, is uh, 10 to 15 feet from the property line. Notice of the public hearing was published in the Salado Village Voice on Thursday, February 21st, 2019. Additionally, 16 property owners within 200 feet of the request were notified. As of uh, close of business today, we received three responses back, all in favor, and I've given you a copy of the two responses that actually submitted comments uh, for your review. Those were the only two with comments. Again, uh, just for clarity, I will read the conditions required for a variance. That there are special circumstances or conditions affecting the land involved, such that the strict application of the provisions of this ordinance would deprive the applicant of the reasonable use of the land. 
and that the variance is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of a substantial property right of the applicant, that the granting of the variance will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, or welfare, or interest to other property within the area, and that the granting of the variance will not have the effect of preventing the orderly use of land within the area in accordance with the provisions of this ordinance. I've also provided you a site plan. I've provided you a location map, a picture of the proposed new garage, which he'll be building out of approved materials uh, in our ordinance, and the pictures of the existing slab. With the pictures of the existing slab, I also included some of the backyard. One of the reasons why the applicant is requesting that he be able to build on the existing slab is uh, the topography in his backyard. As you see, there's a little, um, some rolling hill a little bit, in a little wet weather creek that's uh, in his backyard, which is why uh, he believes the previous property owner had placed that slab in the front, uh, and that was prior to our incorporation. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have, and uh, Mr. Quintanilla is here as well to present his case. Questions, please, to Chrissy first. Chrissy, I do have a, a, a question. Yes, sir. When you were, when you were giving your spell here about this, you said that you had received a block and the numbers weren't very clear? I, uh, we received a survey. So whenever somebody asks me um, or applies for a building permit for anything, uh, especially an accessory building, something like that, I ask them for a site plan. The best way to get me a site plan is a copy of their survey or most recent survey that they have. His was from when he purchased the property. The survey is very, very even the title company could not really read, which is why I don't have the exact location of the slab from the property line. What I was able to do is just go out and assume where I believe the property line is as opposed to our 15 feet right of way and, and then measure it off to the slab. But I don't have it on the actual survey and that's why I said 10 to 15 feet. It was just unreadable on the survey. Do you feel comfortable with that? I feel comfortable in my measurements, yes, sir. I believe it is 10 to 15 feet from the property line. Yes, sir, he's here. Yes, sir. Um, Brandon Cantania, if you will, please. Brandon Cantania, 506 St. Pedro Road, Salerno, Texas. Thank you, Chrissy. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I am here to request permission from the village to allow construction of a detached garage on my property. I would first like to take a second and thank my neighbors for supporting my request of beautifying my property. Secondly, I want to thank our City Council for allowing me the opportunity of requesting a variance to build my dream garage. I would like for the board members to know the effects of this project. Number one, this will beautify my property by utilizing a pre-existing slag to build a nice, solid, detached garage. I do understand that the value of my house will rise along with my taxes. This will be okay with my wife and I. We notice the village uses our tax dollars wisely and supportively of our community's needs. Secondly, this pre-existing slab is set far enough back for any safety concerns of the street intersections view at the present time or the future. I feel the original owner of my property had no other choice or option but to place the slab in its present location for a future garage due to my property's terrain. In closing, it is my intent to bring beautification to my community, and more tax dollars to Village of Salado. This variance is a win-win opportunity. Thank you for your time. One more time, your first name is? Brandon Quintanilla. Oh, your first name, Brandon. Brandon, did you write that? Uh, yes, sir, I did. Well Thank you. Are you running for office? Uh, <laughs> not at this time. <laughs> This is an open slab right off of the uh, property. So if you were to drive down the San Pedro to the intersection of, I 
believe it's San Juan. Yeah. San Juan. Yeah. You will notice the slab there off the side of San Pedro Road. And you're going to go to the driveway in there too? Yes, sir. Asphalt or concrete? I'm going to use concrete for the driveway. And that's not too close to the intersection or any kind of safety uh, issues? No, sir. I'm thinking from the point of the street to the front of the garage, uh, it's approximately 30 feet, somewhere around there. Uh, again, like Chrissy had mentioned, the property line was really difficult to locate on the survey, so I can't be precise with the measurements off the property line itself. So. I guess we don't know who needs to set who needs to make the motion. I'll make the motion without any reservation. That don't let that pause bother you because you did a magnificent job of supporting a, a wonderful project. And that's what the neighbors said too. They, they added what Sarah said as well, so it must be something that they're proud of as, as much. So I move that we approve this variance request. With the conditions of what? With an affirmative finding of the conditions. With an affirmative finding of the conditions. Second. Motion has been made to 
please. Uh, discussion, please. Question has been called. All in favor, raise your hand, please. Opposed, likewise. It's five zero. So you did vote. Yes, I did. Vote. Thank you, gentlemen. Yes, thanks, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Number two. Now you're coming out of the Board of Adjustment and going into the Board of Alder. Yeah, that's where I'm going. <laughs> Want to make sure we're headed down the same back. Thanks. John, I hope you enjoy your last evening. <laughs> Consent agenda, please. There are two items, A and B, on the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion to have that consent agenda approved. I move we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, raise your hand, please. Opposed, likewise. It is for zero. Status reports. A. Village Administrator's status report. John? Uh, yes, sir. Mayor, Mayor, members of the board, members of the public, let me run through a, a few items uh, very quickly. Uh, first of all, status report on the wastewater project. Uh, uh, run through a couple of quick items. First of all, we received a notice of substantial completion uh, from our contractor on the wastewater treatment plant, which means he, uh, for all practical purposes, is done with constructing the wastewater treatment plant. There's some finish up, some touch up. Uh, there'll be some punch list items I'll have to go through, but uh, this is a huge milestone as far as this wastewater project goes. You know, collection, uh, the collection system installation is already complete. Uh, the perimeter fence for the wastewater treatment plant site is complete. Uh, regarding the SISD service extension, collection system crews are running ahead of schedule on the installation of a wastewater collection line on Salado School Road. And over on Williams Road, the bore for that wastewater collection line is expected to begin within the next two weeks. So we're making a rather quick progress as far as the school district extension goes. Our rate consultants are finalizing the proposal uh, as far as sewer rates to be charged on a monthly basis. That proposal will be presented to the board next week. We'll set the date for that workshop next week. And the target date for startup of the wastewater system we announced at the last meeting, again, we remind folks, it'll be April the 2nd. We're anticipating sending letters out to customers uh, early next week that will provide direction on how to connect and give them the date and give them the time limit to connect. Um, we have uh, already started loading information on the city's website on the wastewater page. You can find a list of plumbers and electricians. You can find a list, and it's been on there for a couple of weeks, of, of properties that, uh, that are to be connected to the system. It talks about the various systems, the various costs, and we'll continue to update that. We'll have some detailed drawings on uh, connections for plumbers. Uh, a lot going on as far as the, uh, the startup of this system goes. Just to give you an idea of what the treatment plant looks like as of this week. Yes, there actually was sunshine in the sky that day. And you can see uh, it really has cleaned up very well. And you can see we are really pretty much done with this plant. So we're gonna try to get you guys out there before the end of the month for a walkthrough. Uh, so you can have a, have a good look at that. We also are in the process of planning a kind of a ceremonial kickoff, if you will, the first flush. Uh, it probably will take place after the pumps are turned on and, and the things are starting to flow through that plant. It'll probably take place in early April, maybe the second week in April. We're trying to finalize the date because we're trying to get some dignitaries lined up to attend that particular ceremony since this really is a milestone event for this community. So we're almost there. It's amazing. We started about a year ago and uh, we're, we're there. Status report on the Old Mill Arrowhead Road intersection repairs. Uh, we've been dealing with this, as you know, for the last uh, few weeks, actually the last month or two. Uh, this was a situation that cropped up several months ago. Uh, and what happened was at that particular intersection, on the southwest corner of that intersection, uh, we began seeing a significant seepage of water uh, that was spilling onto the roadway uh, probably four or five months ago. Uh, the water company was notified about it because typically in those situations, that's your first point of contact because you want to see if it's a water leak or not. They did what's called a residual test. And the residual test basically is a test that determines whether there's chlorine content in the water. Your public water supply has chlorine in it. So normally if it's a public water supply leak, you're gonna see some, some chlorine turn up in that test and that's an indicator that yes, they're a leak. Uh, they did that test. And from what I understand, the initial test had some faint detection of chlorine, but subsequent tests found no chlorine in that. Uh, so we continued to monitor the situation, uh, thinking that maybe it was gonna be a spring uh, that had popped up. With the amount of rainfall we've had, we've had a number of uh, spring surfacings if you will, in this particular area over the last uh, six to eight months. So the thought process was that this was basically another one of those incidents. 
Uh, we watched it. We, we obviously were very concerned because we were starting to see some degradation uh, in our roadway base and in the roadway surface at that intersection. Uh, so we lined up our uh, we lined up our crews to go ahead and go in and put in a French drain, uh, and we also lined up some crews to go in and make some repairs to the asphalt. Uh, as part of that process, we, we decided to call one more time just to make sure that it wasn't a water leak. Uh, they had tried several times and ensured us several times it was not that. And we got a phone call about a week ago uh, from uh, the water company that said that uh, they had actually detected a water line leak. And that water line leak was under the driveway of a home just west of this particular intersection. Uh, and it was to their surprise and everyone's surprise, but they uh, basically had a buckle that was leaking. They fixed that buckle and that thing has dried out significantly. Uh, which is actually very good news. So no French drain, we saved $30,000 on that piece. Uh, we now will come in and, and do the roadway repairs. We're waiting a little bit longer on the roadway repairs because that base, you don't know how soaked that base was and that front yard actually had almost a half inch of water in that front yard on a regular basis for, for months. So we're giving that area a chance to dry out a little bit before we go into doing any type of asphalt repair, uh, but it is very soon. We're thinking probably within the next week to 10 days we'll be in there doing that. So. That's good news, we did spend the money uh, and uh, we're glad the water company found what they have found and, and repaired the situation. <clears throat> Status report on Senate Bill 282. As you know, the legislature's underway. As a matter of fact, tomorrow, I believe, is the last day for bills to be filed. And so uh, Senate Bill 282 was filed in a timely fashion by uh, your senator, our senator uh, in Austin, and that is uh, Senator Buckingham. Uh, this is referred to as the Salado Bill. It was introduced in the last session and then God make it through. So she reintroduced the bill again. Uh, the legislation requires liquidated damages stemming from TxDOT project delays to be spent on transportation projects in the TxDOT district where the project delay occurred. The way the system is set up right now is TxDOT builds penalty clauses into their contracts and those dollars, which quite frankly can be significant, end up going right back into TxDOT's general fund and then you get allocated to different places all over the state. They're not targeted towards the communities that are having to pay the price for the, uh, the dereliction and the duty of, of the contractor. So what this bill does is this bill would basically set it up to the point that any liquidated damages TxDOT picks up off a construction delay, those liquidated damages would go right back to the district, the TxDOT district, where the delay occurred, and they would put those into transportation projects in that district. So in our case, they would be going into the Waco district, and in this situation, they probably end up going into the Salado project that we're doing right now and those type of things. Uh, the mayor did an outstanding job yesterday. He went up at 8 o'clock in the morning and testified before the Senate Transportation Committee. And uh, the bill after that testimony passed uh, unanimously and is now going to the Senate floor for a vote. And then, of course, hopefully it'll be on to the House. Keep in mind, he cleared the Senate uh, in a vote last year, but it <coughs> fell apart after that. Uh, so hopefully they got started early enough, and hopefully the bill is going to get through and has enough support at this point to overcome any hurdles that existed in the past. Uh, just so you know, the, the question that, that we posed in the process of prepping for the testimony was how much money was paid in the way of liquidated damages as a result of the I-35 project in Salado. And I think the number is not as high as some people felt or some people thought, but it ended up, uh, based on the information provided by TxDOT, that uh, the contractors ended up paying some $535,000 in liquidated damages uh, from the contract delays in this, in this particular area. So. Uh, needless to say, this community is about to get three to four million dollars worth of improvements downtown, uh, and I think in part some of that is, is TxDOT's interest in trying to help help make good, uh, you know, as, as far as what this community went through. Uh, but that gives you an idea of what you're looking at as far as the dollars generated from liquidated damages. Speaking of the Main Street Improvement Project, uh, as you know, uh, we've been working on this for some time. TxDOT uh, opened bids just a few weeks back. They came in about a million dollars over. Uh, and so the big question was, what's going to happen at this stage of the game? The good news is this. We heard today from TxDOT, and they've indicated that they're going to go ahead and proceed with the project. They feel comfortable that they've got funding that exists for this project. So it doesn't look like they're going to try to pare down the project at this time. And it looks like the fact that they're working on a contract, and they hope to have that contract uh, back and ready to sign uh, sometime in May, which means we can anticipate construction starting on this project. Uh, in early summer, probably June, mid-June is what they're talking about. It's an 18-month completion date for this project. This project involves sidewalks on both sides of Main Street, decorative lighting on both sides of the street. It involves significant drainage improvements. And, and I can tell you, when I say significant drainage improvements, that means things will be torn up probably more than we've seen them torn up uh, in, you know, on Main Street. It, it certainly is going to make the sewer system disturbance look pale in comparison. But at the end of the day, it's going to solve some of the drainage, drainage problems that our property owners have been dealing with for some time. Uh, 
Uh, 18 months to complete. It's just a reminder there will be a, a full closure of Main Street at basically the Green Bridge, the Bicycle Bridge, uh, and that will take place for probably about a 45-day period. It will take place in January of 20. Uh, and they'll shut that down. They'll obviously you know, adequately sign a detour to get people around that particular area, but they're replacing that culvert system in the bridge right there at that location. We're not replacing the main bridge. That rumor's on the street. They're only dealing with the, uh, the particular uh, small culvert bridge over Rock Creek. Uh, speaking of the Main Street Bridge, I, I was notified this afternoon by TxDOT that they have completed their traffic studies. Uh, and, and the traffic studies were, were, that, were things that we requested. Uh, there's been discussion off and on about uh, whether the city at some <laughs> point will, want, will, want, or will be willing to take over Main Street uh, from the state. And one of the big concerns was that bridge, the big bridge. And that is that the bridge over goes away. We don't want that road if we're responsible for replacing that bridge. And the state has an off-system uh, bridge project program. And basically, if you meet a certain threshold of traffic, the average daily traffic counts, uh, if it meets a certain threshold, it would qualify for funding, uh, significant funding, 90, 10, 80, 20, those type of ranges uh, for uh, replacement of a bridge if, if that's needed in the future. Uh, you obviously, obviously, you would think that a flood would take that bridge out if something's going to take it out. So you've got to do FEMA money, mitigation money that could go into that. But the good news is this. The last traffic counts that were done on Main Street did not place Main Street as a qualifying roadway for that off-street uh, bridge. <coughs> uh, the word we got today is the numbers have increased significantly. The daily trip counts on Main Street right now are running almost 3,600 vehicles a day. Uh, and as such, it does qualify uh, for that uh, off-street program, that off-system that off program. So that's a good thing, uh, you know, and it's also something to, to take into account as we talk about Main Street in the future. But I thought I'd pass that along. Stats report on the uh, May 2019 election uh, following the withdrawal of two candidates. Uh, the names of four candidates remain on the ballot in the race for three positions on the Board of Aldermen. Uh, the, the drawings you choose the order of the names on the ballot took place uh, Monday, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, early voting is set to begin on Monday, April 22nd. Uh, 2019, and it will end on Tuesday, April the 30th, 2019. We are coordinating with the school district on this. As you know, this year we're going to be using the brand new voting machines. This year there will be a, pa a paper component in addition to the electronic component. Next year's election is all electronic, just forewarning. So uh, they're kind of kind of they're starting the process of weaning us from the full paper ballot process that we've used in the past. Uh, In-person voting will uh, take place, as, as you know, at the Civic Center, just as it has in years past. Election day is Saturday, May the 4th. Saturday, May the 4th from 7 to 7. Uh, nothing's changing as far as that goes. Very quickly, a couple of responses to some comments that came up during your systems communications, Mayor. The Encore situation, we don't know if it's directly related, but we'll find out. But we received notification yesterday afternoon from Encore that they have identified some loading issues with their power lines on Royal Street. And, and my hunch is that's probably part of what we're dealing with over here in your neighborhood and in some of the Royal Street neighborhoods. Uh, they have been monitoring the situation for, for a while and, and they've isolated they've isolated the problem they feel and now they're working on figuring out how they're going to go in and, and address that issue and increase the capacity uh, to balance the load to the point where it does not trip down. That's a concern for us, not just because of our citizens, but it's a concern for us because we're about to bring on a 200,000 gallon a day wastewater treatment plant that's on that same power grid, that same power system. And so we've talked to them about that situation. Uh, so those discussions are underway right now. And uh, we're on it, and we're going to continue to push that situation. Encore sometimes is not the fastest in the world to resolve problems. And uh, we, we have stressed the importance of, of, of keeping our people online. And they know our importance, and they know that they're going to get a phone call regardless of the hour of the day or night if we start getting calls. So uh, know that from that standpoint. And then as far as the Chisholm Trail House, we were in discussions uh, late last week with the owner of that Chisholm Trail House. They have been intermittently bringing contractors in and out and getting it done. They are still within their window to complete and they still understand the significance of it and they still understand that we're on. So uh, just know that we're, we're driving that horse and then continuing to push that horse. And that's all we've got here. Good. John, uh, I, I just want to talk to the audience for a few moments. John, I, I want to say thank you because long before it was decided that Luke was because of a joint. You said that it was water that was causing it. And I would say that's probably maybe a month before. And that's what good experience. And that's good. Thank you for, for seeing that and for staying with it. 
You have a, let, me, let me say this. You have a good water supply corporation. Yes, you have an excellent water supply corporation. Yes, and it, it's real easy to sit back in the chair and criticize and point fingers and say they don't, they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Until you've been on the back end of a valve key trying to find a water leak in a system, it's not fair to criticize. It's, it's, a, very, it's, a, it's a challenging job because it is a seek and find. So we're grateful they found it, and we're grateful they found it days before we were about to start turning dirt, because we were on the verge of bringing you a thirty thousand dollar contract to put in front of us. And you're exactly right. That wasn't a criticism. They are an extremely good corporation. Extremely good. Now, I want to talk to y'all. I know we suffered a lot during the construction, an awful lot. And I know that there were times when we said, some of this needs to be paid back to the solar. And of course, we were told that you can't do that. You just can't do that. We stayed with it. And I want you to listen carefully. We may not have gotten what other small towns are going to get, but we set the standard for other small towns. And small towns that may not have any money, maybe not even enough to, to fix their infrastructure, will now have a chance to use some of the money that they might receive for their benefit. So Salado, as always, we set the standard and you made it happen. Salado Police Status Report. Mayor, I'll handle that report. It'll be very brief. We'll have a uh, call for service for you at your next meeting. Uh, two things we wanted to, to mention. Number one, the cops are, are, have are donning new uniforms. And I'm talking about the Citizens on Patrol group. Uh, Merle and, and Larry Nathanson worked uh, diligently, and they have secured jackets for all of their uh, all of their troop. And they've also got brand new hats. So no longer will they be wandering in the dark looking like a bunch of street workers. Uh, <laughs> Shakers and and uh, more guys seconds to show us off on that. We actually have excuse me, so nice. You got it. Go for it. Uh, they're like this, so they now have a target to shoot at. <laughs> <laughs> this meets the requirements of the fire department and the police department. So you will see uh, see that of course on the front. Very nice, weather resistant. So, thank you. Thank you, Don, for, and the council for putting up some of the. Oh, you just now, though, could you show it to us? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they'll show it to you tonight when you shake your door too loud. <laughs> <laughs> The garage doors are being opened at 10.15. So we, we, we as always uh, appreciate and I know the officers appreciate uh, the support that they get from uh, assistance on patrol. The fun thing about this job is getting to introduce new employees and recognize existing employees. Uh, and I want to call two folks from the back up. David, why don't you and Sonia come up, please. Uh, I'd like to thank David Guthrie. David Guthrie is one of our police officers. He's been with us for a while. He's a senior officer in the department right now. And he is, uh, he's in a lead position, he's not the chief, he's, he's not the sergeant, but he's in the lead position right now as we are near the end of our search for a police chief and with mass departure. Uh, and the next one is stepping up to the microphone like she's very comfortable at that microphone. Uh, but we are, you're looking at, I just call her Cutter. And I say that because she is truly cutting new ground in this community. You're looking at the first female police officer in the village of Salado's history. And I think we owe her a Process. She's got a good field training officer in Dave Uh But she's in the middle of that process 
where she's learning the ins and outs of the PD, report writing, all those type of things. She's been through school. Uh, she's a veteran of the, Cl the Killeen Police Department. More importantly, she's a veteran of our United States military forces. So we're grateful for her service. <laughs> she has a husband who you don't want to mess with. <laughs> and I will tell you, you don't want to mess with him, especially if you've been drinking and driving. Uh, her husband is known as kind of the guru, the go-to of uh, EWI enforcement in this particular area, not just in Killeen, Texas. He's a veteran of the Killeen Police Department. Uh, and Sonia brings the family to this department, not just Sonia. So we're glad she's here and, and we're happy to have her. Do you want to say anything? Yeah, well, I'm happy to be here. I love Toledo, so this is where I want to be. Asking. Welcome to work. Thank you. Is your husband here? He's not. He's, he's working. You said she was a member of the armed forces. Which branch was she a member of? I'll, I'll let her brag on her. I was in the army. You were in the what? I was in the army. <laughs> so my, my dad was Navy. Okay. My, uh, I was army. My daughter's Air Force. So you were a member of the army? I was. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he is. But the gentleman's son, so you know, is a retired two star. So, uh, and then you've got a Navy leader at, at the helm. <laughs> Don't worry about the leader part. Army, army out like the Navy anytime, right? <laughs> I know you would agree with I that. Right? All the time with my dad, so. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when the football game's done. <laughs> well, you're going to be like Don. I hope you enjoy your life. <laughs> 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 well, give you 
you an overview. When you show up at the site, visit SalatoTexas.com, this is what it looks like. Um, it's got three pictures that are scrolling through. Um, pretty soon, I'll be changing these uh, as we get more focused on our um, photography efforts. Um, you'll see on the bottom is just the main menu. It's a very basic site. Um, the hope is that it'll uh, broaden in its scope uh, over the next year or two. Um, but for now, uh, access to the event calendar here, um, the online version of the visitor guide, and then a uh, contact page here. If you click on this middle button here, uh, it brings up what we were referring to earlier as uh, in previous months as the visit widget. Um, it is essentially the same thing that is the Visit Salado app. So when you refer to those things, you sort of refer to them uh, both as the same thing. Um, when you pull it up, uh, it's got a map of Salado. All of this was inputted or input by us um, and edited and, and customized, um, and it's still customizable to this day. So the events are being submitted uh, by the um, community. Uh, I'm going in, editing, and adding, adding them as necessary, but uh, I've sent out an email to all visitor-facing businesses uh, and organizations uh, to explain to them how to uh, submit an event, very simple. Um, so these have, start, these have been submitted by them, uh, all the things that are going on, live music, tastings, that sort of thing. There's a section for tours. Uh, right now, all I've got up here is Salado National Landmarks Tour. Um, I have reached out to, and I'm about to start working with uh, Keep Slater Beautiful with their garden tour on here, uh, as well as PALS to uh, <coughs> update the list of all the public art. Uh, in town and then hopefully we can stay in touch with them and keep that list updated. Uh, that way we have a, a fully digital version, a digital uh, means by which people can take these tours that have been offered here for so long. Uh, the next bit is lodging. Uh, it's listing with a map uh, with locations of all the lodging properties in town. And then things to do, which includes basically everything else, uh, restaurants, art galleries, uh, everything within the village and things that would uh, be attractive to visitors outside the village, such as Talk Ridge Falls Park, uh, the Gulf Archaeological Site, things like that. Um, and all of this can be added. When a visitor is using this, they can add it to a plan and sort of plan their experience. If they want to mark something so they don't forget it, if they're looking right here. All of our ads, all the ads that I've mentioned to you previously, and that I will continue to mention to you, drive people to this site. Um, and so they'll, the, Eventually, like I said, it'll be built out more. Uh, but for now, um, they'll utilize these tools that we have here to, to sort of cut their experience here. So, yeah. Um, and that's about all I have for you. That's well You guys think you did a real good job on that? Do you? Well, you can clap if you want. <laughs>
to number four. And it's 4A. Mayor, for the record, Alderman Coachman is stepping out from the dais as he has previously previously declared that he is directly adjacent as far as his residence and property to the subject subdivision so he has a conflict of interest. So he will not be taking part in the discussion and he has left the room. adjacent to this tract uh, 
uh, for access in and out of their backyards uh, over the years, uh, without question. Uh, but they, they've used it. And when the subdivision came up, I think there was some interest in seeing if the village uh, you know, could do something to try to protect that easement. It's not village property. It's not a formal dedicated easement. It's not an implied particular, this particular race. That said, uh, we, have, we have talked to the developer uh, about working with the property owners who have interest in seeing that maintained uh, to, to see if there's some type of arrangement that can be made through his development to allow for continued access of that area and not develop that particular strip. Uh, Mr. Rosemont has been responsive, at least to our request from what I understand. He has met with Mr. Stalka on, on a couple of occasions. They've talked on the phone back and forth. They've gone as far as Mr. Rosemont has offered to sell the property. Uh, to the adjacent property owner if there was interest. Uh, it amounts to about a quarter acre is, is what the estimate is at this stage of the game. Uh, my understanding is those discussions about purchase have, have really not gone anywhere at this point, uh, but the offers are out there, you know, as far as to sell the property. Uh, there was a discussion, as I've been told, that, that took place last night. I was not party to it, so this is, this is what I'm being told, and that is there was a discussion between uh, the applicant in this case and, and, and Merle, who's kind of been the representative some of these concerned property owners on the other side uh, about that easement again last night. And they had a very good discussion, a very cordial discussion. And I want to stress this. The discussions, as I understand it, have been very cordial between the parties involved. And right. I think this says a lot about Salado. Here? Absolutely. Yeah. So. No, 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 uh, no issues there. Absolutely. And they, they, they've talked well, they've worked well together. And, and one idea that came out of their discussions last night was, uh, would Mr. Rosemont, or, or is Mr. Rosemont, I think he offered up the idea of maybe offering up that easement and dedicating that as parkland uh, and, and to, to you know, eliminate some of his, and as you know, in this particular subdivision, he was planning to pay, make payment to the city in lieu of dedicating parkland. That's a smaller subdivision. Our, our parkland ordinance envisions larger uh, subdivisions and, and larger parkland dedications. Five acres is unrealistic to require the applicant in this case uh, to dedicate for a park due to the small tract and, and those type of things. So he's offered that up as an alternative to, to, to not develop it and he said he'd give that to the city as parkland. I will say this from a staff standpoint on that particular one as it was presented to me and I mentioned this to Bear and I've not had a chance to talk to Merle but my philosophy towards, towards that is linear parks are, are not uncommon. In fact, they're kind of an in thing now. You're seeing them more and more. You're going to get a subdivision, a concept plan here in the next couple of weeks where they're going to propose some linear parks out of 2268. That said, if you're going to dedicate it as parkland, parkland, there's not enough room to have vehicles and parkland on that site. So translation, if it's going to be dedicated as parkland, it needs to be parkland and not a vehicle access uh, for any adjacent property or from either side of that particular reason. So I think it's important to keep that in mind from, from, from that perspective. Uh, we had discussions with Russell Rosemont because there's obviously been some public concern about lot size. And I think a couple of you have, have talked to me about your concerns about lot size. Uh, and that the original request was for a minimum lot size of a quarter acre and the submitted concept plan actually comes in slightly under a quarter acre as far as the minimum lot size of these lots. And we asked him if, if he could possibly look at the idea of living up to that minimum lot size of a quarter acre uh, and bringing those lots up to a quarter acre minimum and, and, and live by that initial variance submission. Uh, or even look at the idea of coming up with an average lot size of a quarter acre, which would be a mix of some larger and some smaller, and, and even look at aligning those potentially where they would be, the larger ones would be closer to the, to the existing homes, you know, uh, to try to serve as a buffer from the smaller lot. He looked at that, and I, and I talked with Mr. Rosemont late this afternoon. He got, got word back from his, his engineer. And it would require a reduction of somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 35 lots uh, if he was to try to live by that particular standard. And uh, understandably so, his, his feeling is that that's probably an awful big give, uh, you know, depending on what he's planning to sell his quarter acre lots for, to, to give up 35 lots in that situation. That said, that's his ball game. Y'all have a decision to make, you know, as far as what, what your thoughts are and what your what your feelings are as far as the, the character of the development and how it impacts the community. So that kind of lays the lays the groundwork for the discussion. Uh, there's been some a lot of discussion, I think, 
in, in the last two weeks yeah. on this particular issue, and it's before you tonight for, for your reconsideration at the request of Alderman Jackson. Keep in mind this is a concept plan, and I think that's the thing that people have to understand. This is a concept plan, It's and in, in, in what will happen is this is, for lack of a better phrase, a master plan. It's, it's a broad, it's the thousand foot view of the proposed <coughs> subdivision. It doesn't specify where lots will be located, what size lots will be located here or there. He has given a breakdown of the lots that he's anticipating as far as his sizes. He's providing the detail we require to give us an idea of what's to come. And what will happen is if this concept plan gets approved, there then will be a preliminary plat or a construction plat that's filed, and he will file that per phase. And, and, and provided his concept plan matches his construction plat, uh, then you really can't deny it. Uh, it's all based on the concept plan. That's the starting point uh, from that standpoint. He has met every condition of the concept plan for this subdivision with the exception of the lot size variance. And that really is the, is, is the point of discussion because everything else, we really can't get into him. We, we can express our feelings about what it is we'd like to see in that subdivision. And I think he'd be very open to that type of input. You know, if you want to see less fences, if you want to see articulation, those types of things, you know, those, those are very good comments you can make. It's not part of the concept plan, but you can give him an idea of what your thoughts are and what your concerns are. This is an open discussion. It's not meant to be an accusatory discussion. Uh, you know, it's not meant to be a, a derogatory discussion. It's an open, free flow discussion over what's before you tonight, and that's the concept. So, Mayor, I'll toss it back to you and let you take it from here. Questions to the line, please. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one question. Yes, sir. Can our water treatment plant handle this? Yes, sir. Right now, it can, yes. Tom, do we have, uh, is, is there a requirement for any uh, lot in the village that it's, you can't have more than 35% of the property You've got you've got some limitations. You've got impervious cover uh, requirements that that exist for uh, residential and commercial properties. Uh, residential typically is 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 uh, a little bit more restrictive on the impervious cover end than, than the commercial. Commercial is about seventy percent. Residential runs in that ballgame, depending on the size of the lots. This city's zoning is is kind of a. Kind of an interesting scenario as far as residential zoning goes, because SF7 we really have one one real we have we have a, we have some townhouse categories and those type of things that play in, uh, but it's not lot size specific. What you typically see is you see different categories. You see R1s, R2s, R3s in a lot of cities, and those based they're based on the, the lot size itself. Ours is not uh, necessarily built that way, but yes, you do have impervious cover limitations for residential and they do differ greatly from commercial. Don, who's paying for uh, the line that goes from the sewage plant to the, this new addition? The developer. And will this line be sized so that we can also have additional uh, growth in that area too, with, in case that uh, we have additional uh, developments that go on over there? It will be, it will be sized to, to handle his development in addition to the development along the way. And I say the development along the way because there is uh, there's some interest among some of the property owners between that subdivision and where our line terminates right now. As far as any oversizing beyond that, that would be a decision we would need to make. We do not have anybody downstream, for lack of a better phrase, asking for the service at this point. There is another several there are many acres uh, to the east of him that, that was part of his parent track that, that may at some point come to us about wastewater service. But at this stage, again, we have no formal request from them. We have given him a commitment letter for wastewater. And then we have a discussions about other developers coming in and concept plans are on the, on the, on the books to be looked at in the near future. And if we look at all those, including sanctuary, whatever that's going to be out there, how does how all that stack up with the capacity of our plant? Well, I think the, the, the concept plan that's, that you're going to be getting off 2268 is actually coming in under seven. 
they, they attempted to work out an arrangement, from what I understand, with a sanctuary, and, and that was not uh, successful in those discussions. And they're not wanting to wait, they're wanting to move forward. So they're talking about coming in on set, they've got half acre. Uh, some point down the road, they may look, may look at doing something like that, depending on capacity, depending on what they're able to work out in agreement. Uh, the others will have interest, I know, in wastewater. Uh, they're on the west side, but as you know, we're trying to work solutions on the west side right now. So right now, you have capacity. Uh, the thing to keep in mind that I think people have to understand, and, and, and we continue to hear this and we'll continue to say this, and that is the fact that this city is not going to live on one wastewater plant. And, and it is, it's, it's, it's one of those situations that we're going to need to have a wastewater facility on the west side of town to handle the west side growth. And, and that will hopefully allow for capacity on the east side for the future uh, and, and the growth that comes. What happens with Sanctuary is anybody's guess at this stage of the game. They've told us for some time they're coming and, and we haven't seen anything at this point. Uh, but this, the, the thing, we have a development agreement with them in place that says that we need to be able to provide service to them. It doesn't guarantee capacity in that treatment plan. And I think that's a misnomer. The agreement we have with them says that we will provide wastewater service to them. I think the other thing that people need to understand, sidebar issue, we're not here to talk about sanctuary, but sanctuary is obligated to pay the same impact fees that Mr. Rosemont's gonna pay if this gets through, and that the brothers will pay if they get their subdivisions through, and the other guys who come into town, and the other gals who come into town will have to pay. So there's not a free ride on the impact fee world for them. They're paying the same upfront substantial cost that everybody else who's tied in the system will pay. I have, uh, I think, two more questions. Yes, sir. Maybe three. Uh, so we're just, uh, he's talking about phase one, two, and three. Uh, when will phase three be under construction and, and that area booked up? Those will be questions you probably should ask him, and he is available here to answer questions on that. Do we come up there? Sure. Yeah. When you do bear state Yes, sir. Good evening, I'm Barry Roseman. Uh, I currently live at 11475 Stanville, uh, and I'm a developer here. Um, it's, it's driven, your question is, is driven by growth here, it's driven by sales. Uh, we anticipate that being, I mean, I'd love to see it in three years, but honestly, it's, you're probably looking at closer to five, realistically. Is that for, just for the first phase, or is it no, the no, phase? No, no, no. Uh, Phase one is uh, as soon as we can get a group together with you guys and, and uh, get it on the ground. I mean, we were really trying to have lots available for sale this summer in phase one. That's what we were attempting to do. Um, for phase three, that would be a projection of three to five years uh, given our given our sales in phase one too. And uh, the other question I have about this is. Uh, can you give us what you're thinking the houses are going to look like and what price range might be in each one of the phases? Yes, sir. So uh, I've heard a little bit of rumor that the, the idea is to do siding homes. That's not what we're planning on doing out there. Uh, we intend for them to be brick rock, just like pretty much everything else in the area. That's, that's the idea, the concept. We want to stay with exactly what Soledad looks like. Um, the homes price tag we're going to be asking for the lots um, the homes are going to start in about the 275 to 280 range starting out and they're going to range probably up around 320 to maybe 350 and then, and then they could go higher than that um, so uh, we intend on and we can work with the village um, i'm not sure what your ordinance will stay as far as uh, looks or masonry we can we can impose uh, self-imposed rule of 80% masonry or something like that if, if you guys like. And we probably will if you don't have something like that because uh, we're, we're not interested in really anything less than that. So. And you mentioned uh, one time that uh, uh, that the houses you thought would you'd envision they'd look really like Columbus out there on the 2484? Well, Is that we, sort of what you're looking at? Yes, yeah, sure. we, we initially thought that uh, those builders would be who, who we would uh, who we would go after to come in here. That's something that's happening in Slater right now. Obviously, it was popular. It sold pretty quickly out there. Uh, those homes out there, I think, 
most of them were almost 100% salt stone and, and uh, brick. Uh, and then the price range out there is pretty similar to what uh, to what we were all So this is really Mayor, I'm going to ask, I have some questions and comments for you. Uh, I'm the reason you're having to be up here again because I was not able to be here two weeks ago, so I want to offer my apologies or something I couldn't uh, skip. So that's why I'm here today. But thank you for understanding that. Uh, my questions are going to be from a subdivision point of view uh, as opposed to a financial, what's best for the city financially. And it's not based just solely on that because, you know, this is the first. Uh, I don't like that. We, we really talked about it as, a, as a board. Yes. It's the first one that's really going to affect the entire community. Yes. Uh, respectful to the community, please keep that keep that out of your mind when I ask each one of these questions. Uh, what was the original lot size of the original plan? What was that size? How, how much was it? How large acreage was it? The original. The original. Mm -hmm. Okay, in acreage, what would that equate to? It's, it's barely under a quarter of an acre. Barely under a quarter yes, of an acre. Yes, sir. Oh. A quarter of an acre for everybody is 10,860 feet, something like that, Mike. Is that here on this? Can we step up there? This is my engineer. Okay, yeah. good. Sun City is, don't you? Yes. Sun City, I think all of our people here understand where Sun City is. Probably most have seen it, Sun City. Uh, if you compare your lot size that you're proposing to us to the lot size that's down there in Sun City, is that possible to do for us? No, because I don't know the lot size that they constructed down there. I'd have to look that up. I don't have a resource to do that. Right there. But you've seen those down there? Yes. yes would, you, would you say, could you say, that they are larger or smaller. Do you know if they're on the sewer there? Do I know if they are on the sewer? Yes, yes. On the sewer? yes, yes they are. Yes, they are. Uh -huh. Honestly, I could not honestly answer that question. Because some people, and I might be one of those, that consider those to be jammed up too tight. I didn't know this, they're, they're well maintained. They do look, look nice, but I'm just trying to compare in my mind. Are we talking about something like that? Or are we talking about something somewhat larger than that? Is that a fair question, first of all? I'm not familiar with the neighborhood, but to tell, put it in footage perspective, the lots are going to be roughly in the 72 and a half, 73 wide, 73 feet, uh, by 126 foot deep. So they're a good size, mm -hmm. a good size lots. Uh, we're, we want to be careful about going too large. Because there's so many half acre lots in Salado, we weren't wanting to compete with that market. But we're trying to we're trying to be a different market. We're trying to have a different market, and, not have, and that's going to come in Salado. I think everybody's going to agree with that. And we're just trying to we're trying to do it the right way, and we're, and we're being very careful and very respectful of what we're doing out there. Um, I'd like to add, let me. Uh, we're making some jobs in the road, and we spent a fortune doing a tree survey out there. 
make sure that we're not removing large center roads or anything like that, more than what's necessary, instead of clear cutting the property, which would have been the most cost effective method, we're spending a lot of time and resources select cutting and mulching the underbrush, removing cedar, um, and, we're, and we're uncovering just a, a ton of, of old giant oak trees out there. It's a beautiful property, and we want, we want to show that. The, the sidewalks that uh, we discussed with Don and some of you guys, uh, there's going to be sidewalks throughout the entire community. Um, you know, we're putting in five foot wide uh, ADA sidewalks along the minor collector that goes down the center that will run all the way from Royal to Whistler Oaks. Uh, that, that gives me a, an idea of what you intend to put up. You're talking about patio homes. Well, you're talking about townhomes. You're talking about garden homes. That's we we yes. see them. Yes. That's what you're talking yes. about. Yes. Again, respectful to the community, Correct. based on what the perceived needs in the community might be. Yes. That, that makes sense. Yes, sir. Uh, what will the uh, this is an idea? What you have? What your idea? What will the street presence of the look like? Can you describe that for us? I know that's not part of our decision making process at all tonight. Yes, sir. We're, we're talking about lot size. But what would the street presence be? Could you describe that to us? Yes, sir. It's, it's obviously the streets will be asphalt. We will have a curb. Um, we'll discuss with Monty on the engineering part of it with water, whether that needs to be uh, stand up or lay down the curb. Uh, but there will be a concrete curb in there. And then, as previously discussed, that there will be sidewalks throughout the entire community. So we, we intend to keep the trees. If we have large trees uh, that present themselves in the street, uh, then we intend to you know, guide around those trees and make some slight adjustments and try to, try to keep those, which is in line with, with how Slato looks today. Take that uh, Smith Branch, that, that road out there. <coughs> take that. Could you describe what the perimeter fence would look like along that? Yes, we, we don't intend on putting a perimeter fence. Do not. No, sir. Okay. Not, what, not, what as part of, not as part of the development. No, okay. So what would that look like after your homes are in there? What would it look like between that, what you have done, and the homes on on the other side of the road? Yeah, so we intend to maintain that as much as possible the way it looks today. We're just going to clean it up and keep it wooded right there. Mm -hmm. uh, but we intend for that to, to look as much as it as possible as it does right now. Okay. Do you plan on other gates, other entrances to the uh, community? So the, 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 there won't be any gates. Um, it's going to be a publicly it, it disappeared. But I, there's, uh, right now, there's currently four um, entrances, exits, if you will, uh, for the neighborhood. There'd be one uh, main one on the Royal that would go out the back into Whispering Oaks. And then there would be two um, going on the Smith branch onto the side. There'd be two? Two, two entrances and exits, no, no gates, um, well, okay. nothing like that. They'll be, they'll be completely open uh, for public use. Okay. Planning ahead now, uh, again, this has no bearing on our decisions. It's not uh, interesting. Are you going to have a homeowner association, HOA? The initial, uh, the initial thought is yes. I would have an HOA. Yes, sir. That's your thought. Okay. Yes, sir. What kind of HOA would that be? What, you, what would you What would you tell us? Is it going to be a voluntary association? Voluntary, no, sir. It would be a mandatory association that would be uh, to maintain the uh, aesthetics of the home, roof pitches, uh, masonry, uh, make sure people maintain their yard. So it would be mandatory. If someone buys a lot out there for you to build on it, that they would have to be in a BOA. They don't have a choice. Yes, sir. What if they don't want to do that? What about that? I don't want to be in a uh, This is American. They don't have to. They just not buy a lot. <laughs> so it would be a requirement, as you said, mandatory. Yes, sir. Yeah, we, yes, sir. We intend on it being required. Now, when you say intend on it being required, is it going to be required? Yes, I'm sir. not trying to nitpick you. Yes, okay. Please take that. Say it's intended to be monitored. Yes, 
it's a little bit more. Okay. It's like this highlight being substantially complete. Right. Look out on that little word. So. When do you send to get? When do you plan on getting started? How soon do you, do you want to start? Well, we've already started. So we started about three weeks ago to a month ago. Uh, we're moving. There was a, a, a old farmhouse that we had on the property that, that we removed. And, and by the way, to be just tear it down and burn it. We recycled that material and then sold it back to the community. It's a good buy there. Um, but we've had, we've had uh, machinery and, uh, by the way, all local contractors, everybody that's been on the property live insulated uh, that are out there cutting trees and, and uh, molds and all that. Uh, talk to us about what your plans are on, on the size of acreage. Tell us about substantially in one quarter, maybe a little less than one quarter. So that's going to average out? Are you saying that's going to average out a quarter? No, sir. Our current plan that we submitted would not average a quarter. No, sir. It would, okay. It, it would be slightly less than a quarter. Uh, but yeah, the average was point two. Tell us, tell us how in, in language or what, how, what would it look like? What's the difference in point two and a quarter? How much would that be? Like a garden size or a front yard? Or? A good size garage. A good size garage. A large garage. That's what we do. That's the difference. Would you have, uh, would you have townhomes and patio homes, would they be scattered in the community or would they be all in one place? No, sir. We, we intend on doing a patio home section in one particular spot in the neighborhood. Um, of your plans right now, and I'm about finished, Barry. I'm yes, about, I'm, about, I'm about finished. Uh, 170, how many homes? 170? 171 is the current. Okay. If they all right at a quarter, how many would that be? We would lose approximately 35. But that would be scattered spread throughout what you purchased. And are you talking about in all three phases total? Yes, sir. Total across the board, we lose approximately 35. What about in phase one? How, how, how many would you lose? Well, that, would, that would average out you know, 11, 12 per phase, just depending on how it works out. Okay. Okay. Are these fair questions? Yes, sir. I mean, I mean, I mean this sincerely. Yes, sir. I want to ask fair questions. The lot size, by the way, uh, we were approached by a very good builder uh, that's, that's roughly in the local area. Uh, not talking about a uh, Very good builder. It's a builder that we want here. Uh, builders come in and has uh, uh, expressed interest in taking down most of the first phase. Uh, it's, it's housing that we want here. It's exactly in line with uh, what's what it looks like today. Price range that this gave you was exactly what this builder wants to be at. House sizes would roughly be 1,900 square feet to 2,600 square feet, is what they presented to me. Um, they, the, the lot sizes that we're presenting to you guys is what they're asking for. They actually ask for smaller than that, but we're not willing to go smaller than that. So, um, and, and that goes to a price per foot, per lot foot. Uh, that allows them to, to compete. If we get too big here, then we're competing with half acre lots, and, and that's really not what we're trying to do with this. Do you get the drift of where I'm, where I'm coming from? Yes. Yes. That's all I have for me. Mayor, can question. I ask you, uh, is there going to be a, a minimum setback from the street to the, yes, to the house? Yes, sir. The initial discussion with Don was approximately 20 feet. Okay, and is there a, a setback uh, from the side? Yes, sir, and that, that was discussed to be between five and seven and a half feet. Okay, so you'd have between 10 and 15 feet between houses yes, sir. and at least 25 feet back from the street. Right? Yes, sir. And then 10 feet in the back, we didn't change that. That is exactly the same as what our half acre uh, lots that we do in a different neighborhood, it's, it's the same thing, so we didn't change that. And if there's no plans for walls and common duplexes, triplexes, anything like that? Uh, 
notice of motor patio homes only and uh, the garden homes. Hey, Mayor, what have we not asked you that we should have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Think about that now. Like, we, we don't proclaim to know all the questions. You know, I, I, I told all of you guys, and, and I don't know, I've heard a lot of rumor uh, about this. What I would like everyone to know um, is that we bought that place at a perfect time. What I mean by that is D.R. Horton came in and put an offer on the entire track. Because they wanted all or nothing, and because we had a contract on that lot, has kept them off of that property. Uh, so, Don and I's conversation, we're going to build a nice, very nice neighborhood that's going to blend in and, and look like what Salado looks like. I live here, my kids go to school here, uh, we've done a subdivision already um, on the northeast side of town. It's a very nice subdivision. I feel like it's, it's added to the community, or at least it's blended into it. Um, and, and that's what we plan on continuing to do. Um, I'm not out of town, I'm not leaving. And um, we want to do something nice. Michael, I, I checked just, and I apologize for taking down the screen, but I wanted to search to try to get you an answer to your question on the Sun City. I just pulled up randomly 25 lots. Okay, thank you. And I will tell you, Probably 80% of those range from 0.2 to 0.23 or mm -hmm. 0.24. There was a scattering above two, three, and then there were just a handful, maybe three or four, mm -hmm. just in the random lots I pulled up that were uh, 0.3 to 0.37 to 0.38. Thank you very much. That, that's a that's a comparison for us. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Mayor, those are all my questions right now. Right now. say to you is we didn't go to a production lot size um, but you do have to go the cost of Salado the cost of land you, you have to go to these lot sizes in order to be able to develop and build something that's nice uh, otherwise what's going to end up happening for you guys is People are just going to start developing around Salado because people want to be here. People want to be in the schools out here. Um, so guys are just going to develop around you, and eventually that's going to lock you in. So you're in a tough position where you, you, you do have to make that call. And it, it, it's about control and growth because Salado is going to grow. Um, it's just about control and growth. And we're, we're not trying to do anything that's, that's negative here. We're trying to, unfortunately, I'm the first one, so I mean, this is probably a good measuring stick from here on out. But if you are not malleable to an extent with the developers, you're just not going to come in. And you're going to end up locking yourself. You're going to lock yourself in. And they'll, they'll build right around Slido, mm -hmm. and they'll build a little 7,500 square foot lots like Monty's talking about. I think there's a, a common ground, and, and I feel like I feel like we're offering that up. I, I think when 
this is done, um, I think the people that are concerned about it are going to wonder what they're concerned for because it's going to be the last place for the beautiful place. Well, Bear, two things I've learned about this community. Everybody in this community has memories like elephants. They remember everything. And 20 years back, they remember everything that you have said tonight. And the second thing that I want to say to you is that, yeah, maybe it is unfortunate because you're going to set the standard. And these people, us up here, we're setting precedents. And that's a big word for us. We don't take this out at all. Now, the next question that I'm going to ask. What are you bringing this land into the village? Say what you guys want. Good. Are you ready tonight? Uh, if this passes, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, we are. are. In all seriousness, we are. If, if you pass our concept and what we're wanting, we'll do it tonight. <coughs> okay. And then we're going get that. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? And you know what he means by standard? Absolutely. Army standard. <laughs> uh, I'm going to clarify that. I'm here for so it's taking Y'all don't mind if we joke a little bit, do you? No, we, we want a high standard. These people not only expect it, they believe it's going to happen. They not quite demand, but they darn sure hold people to what they say. And more people than just these, but the standard's high. I'm, I'm telling you. I, I want to tell I think you, you understand that. Let me say this. You asked a guy earlier how long you've been here. I've only been here for four years, but this is this is our home. Uh, I, I told Earl last night. I'm here. I, I don't. When I see somebody out at the restaurant or walking down Main Street, I'm, like, I'm not going to duck and hide and be ashamed of something that I've done in this town. I'm only going to be doing things that that people like here. I promise you. Appreciate those comments. Thank you. Any other questions or any other comments you would like to make? Okay, thanks. Now we're going to give you a chance. You who have signed up to speak. We're going to begin with Pete Stevens. I gave you the rules before. I will not repeat them. Pete? Well, I was first before. I thought maybe you'd make me. <laughs> yeah, I'm Pete Stevens, and still at 1206 Ambrose Drive in Salado, Texas. Um, this 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 concept is is kind of exciting for me. Now I know there's some people that would like. I want really big lots, and we have one of those really big lots. And it's after seven hip surgeries, it's getting more and more difficult to maintain that. So. I'm kind of looking for something a little bit smaller, and I would like to stay in Slater. So uh, from that standpoint, I'm, I, I don't know what these houses are going to look like, but, uh, but at least I'm interested to see what that, what that does. The other side of this is we've spent a whole bunch of money building a sewer system. And I can't imagine why we don't want to start getting some money back. Let somebody use it. I use it. I mean, and this is exactly what I would expect that they would do it for. I mean, if they're gonna use a sewer system, then they're gonna be able to have somewhat smaller lots. We should have figured that out a long time ago. And, uh, you know, so this all makes sense to me. And, and, you know, what I've driven by there, I've seen some trees that he's taken down and some that he didn't take down. I go, you know, this seems like the kind of thing that I would hope that we would we would approve. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Mr. Stephen Kirkpatrick. Good evening, Mayor and members of the board. My name is Stephen Kirkpatrick of 901 Center Circle. I um, also share some of the same sentiments uh, as the gentleman before me. Very excited to see something like this uh, in Salado um, and to expand on something that the developer said. That development around Soleil was already happening. We cannot deny that uh, the, the, the school district boundary, if you saw that, has just exploded in growth um, and lots of subdivisions. But the 
village boundary has not expanded uh, too terribly much. And if I believe, uh, I remember correctly from the previous meeting, the administrator said in 2018, there were only three uh, building new new builds, uh, building permits pulled in Salado uh, for the entire year. Uh, the growth is coming. I think this gives us an opportunity to uh, give some more money back on the sewer and uh, also help with uh, just the, the money, I guess, that you would get uh, as part of property taxes. This is the first carrot that the village has to provide to a uh, developer to come into the limits instead of just building out of the ETJ or even further, and still being a part of Salado. Um, so I, I do support that. I thank you for your, uh, your time tonight and your service this evening. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Merrill. Did you hear him? Did you did you hear him, Merle? Yeah, he's still hard to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Bruce Falkett. I went two zero two five Indian Trail. Uh, I oppose this uh, from two categories. If you set the lot limit now, it's going to be there forever. You're going to be, be other builders and developers are going to have to, going to meet that request. The average lot side I just Googled in uh, Sun City is just barely 42. And you see the, the closeness of those homes. Granted, those are gorgeous homes. They do, do a good job. Just that if we set the limit, Come on, my grandkids. If I set the limit on too low, they're going to meet it every time. If I set it high on Asa making a grade in his class, he'll make the grade if he knows I'm, uh, what my, my uh, standards are. It's the same thing now with these lot sizes. This is a standard developer layout. And you can see that from various cities around here. Two straight lines, a one straight line, and four or five lines across it, and start popping them up. Very similar. Uh, I would like to go into the second second item that I have that says lot size minimum according to the special. I'd like to say that the gravel road portion is an easement. It has been an implied easement since 1983 when Bell County had it on their records by Quizos, uh, uh, the Quizos family. But the county had been using that and had, had cut and cleared trees for the Quizos to make that a, a ingress and egress for that property. Very good. Again, I'd like to thank you guys for your time and effort, on not only this, but the previous uh, four years. Andy, thank you. Mike, thank you for that time and effort that you put into it. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. <coughs> Mr. Larry Sands. <coughs> Sands, 2300 Indian Trail, Slato. A little over a year ago, we looked at a PowerPoint presentation, well that spring, that our mayor showed us all the potential developments that were about to happen north, south, east, and west of our village. I remember how he explained how very important it was for these developments to be voluntarily annexed into our village for the purpose of some control of the growth with an input of restrictive covenants to increase our tax base and hopefully these two residents, two new residents would shop that way, increase our tax base and hopefully these new residents would shop locally to pay 
to not only pay property taxes, but increase sales taxes in our village. Here we are tonight with a Salado builder, developer, who was issued by our village administrator on September 7th, a sewer capacity letter that plainly stated if this development would voluntarily be annexed in our village, the village would guarantee him new sewer taps for a period not to exceed four years for this 54 acre subdivision with approximately 150 lots. And some attractive, this developer has wonderful plans to build some single family homes on one fourth to one third acres and some attractive patio garden homes on one quarter acre lots with lovely hardwood trees and sidewalks that are close to our restaurants, uh, quaint shops, golf course, and churches. <laughs> These new residents will pay the $3,750 impact fee on <coughs> each home built and will help generate over $600,000 in funds to pay for the new sewer plant. Now, this Salado Builder developer has children in our Salado schools and he wants our village to prosper with a new tax base and he wants the development to have homes that fit in our very own quaint village. He is not from Colleen, um, Belton, Gerald, or Temple. If you don't already know this, we have recently had a clean builder purchase property on West Village Road between the elementary and soon to be built Junior High on Williams Drive. Please ask yourself, will this clean builder build something aesthetically pleasing to our quaint village? In closing, I would hope everyone on this board will agree with me when you have a Slato builder that wants this 54 acre commu community to take on the look that something fits in our village that will also help fund our new sewer system and bring new tax revenues to our village. Is this not what we hoped for in that PowerPoint presentation over a year ago? Thank you. Our last one tonight is Sarah Pox. Lots 
size of a quarter acre or the concept plan with the lot size detail that they provided under the quarter acre? I'd, I'd say with the lot detail as provided. Okay, second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion, please. Question. Question has been called. All in favor, raise your hand, please. Opposed, likewise. Passes. subdivision developments within the corporate limits of Salado and its ETJ. Yes, sir, Mayor, members of the board, this was an item we had in the workshop discussion at the last meeting that is before you tonight for uh, discuss and consider the creation of a task force. Uh, it could be a five-member task force. It could be a seven-member task force. But the idea was to gather members from uh, the comp plan update committee, gather members from d and and have representation from the board on that task force, and let them start chewing on this minimum lot size issue. Questions to Don, please. your recommendation Don? My recommendation would be that you uh, that you choose basically a, a four or excuse me a five member task force and let that task force work on that issue and the task force have representation from the board from the conference plan update committee and B and Z. I move we approve this recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded discussion please. This is uh, this was the, the prime example where I voted no on the previous uh, action. Is that I thought that we should have really had this in place before we we went into a process where we accepted a contract or a, a proposal to uh, reduce lot size. And uh, since we've already done that, then I think it's really hurt our ability to go in into future developers and and talk to them about lot sizes since we've already taken this action. So, uh, am I in discussion or question? We're in discussion. <laughs> okay. I'll keep going until I have a question. Other discussion, please. And what we will do is we will put uh, circulate the uh, names. If you've got names you want to offer up off those committees, let us know, and we'll put those on the next agenda. And you can make a formal report. Again, members from DNZ, the board, and top plan. Why would we leave off just citizens who? It's your choice if you'd like to add them in there. That's what we talked about at the last meeting. If you 
you'd like to add citizens in there as opposed to those three members, then we need to reconsider the item and include that so we don't get into delaying it anymore. Okay. Okay. Other discussion, please. Okay. D. Discuss and consider possible action setting a date for a special board of aldermen meeting to establish service rates for the Salado wastewater system. Yes, sir. Mayor, members of the board, our rate consultant has finished his rate study and the framework and is prepared to present to the board. Uh, we're thinking Monday or Tuesday, which day works best for you all. He is available both of us, and that will be next week for presentation and action. Questions to Don, please. You're not going to see much of a difference, so you know, from what was originally presented. What time? I would say 6 o'clock. I will tell you Tuesday, if you schedule it Tuesday, we have a PZ meeting at 4. Um, it shouldn't last at 6 o'clock, but this evening. We'll do Tuesday at 6. Okay. How's everybody else? Because we need everybody at this we meeting. Did. We did. Would 6.30 be better for people's schedules? 6, Six is fine. I'll Six. commit to 5.30, but I'll commit to 7.30. 6 is fine for me. Everybody there? Mike, you there? Yes, we'll be. 6 o'clock. We'll be in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Our, our grandkids are staying with us that day. So <laughs> you, may, you, may be, you may get here at 4 o'clock. Is your wife here? Yes. <laughs> he said, you heard what he said. I, heard. I just yeah. want you to know. I just let the right stand that JT's in the back of the room, too. <laughs> so. Marriage counseling is two to three in the morning. So. E, discuss and consider possible action regarding a proposed interlocal agreement between the village of Salado and the Salado ISD relating to reimbursement of costs for the extension of wastewater service to the Salado. ISD properties located on Salado School Road and Williams Road. Don? Yes, sir. I may remember the board. This is the agreement that we've talked about a couple of meetings. Uh, it's a very simple, standard, straightforward agreement that basically says that the village will uh, contract for design and construction, which we've done, and the school district will reimburse us, which they will do. Uh, they have the cost estimates that actually come in under what were originally provided. Uh, we recommend approval of this agreement so we can send it on to the school district and let them finalize it. Get all parties signed on board. Questions to Don? I'll entertain a motion. I move we approve this recommendation. Second. Motion to make and second to discussion, please. Question. Question has been called. All in favor? Raise your hand, please. Please likewise passes. I have just to step away on this next one. Discuss and consider possible action regarding a proposed professional services agreement with Jacobs CH2M HILL relating to the provision of management operation and maintenance services for the Village of Salado wastewater system. Uh, yes, sir. Mayor, members of the board, uh, this has uh, come with uh, some rather extensive negotiation, and uh, this is the operating agreement for the uh, collection system. As you know, we're not going to hire staff and buy a bunch of equipment. Uh, rather, we're going to leave it to the professionals to run this system. Uh, and then through the RFP process, there are a few process we feel we've brought you a, a true professional firm to run this. The firm is uh, Jacob CH2M Hill. Uh, they have extensive uh, history in managing the municipal wastewater systems as well as municipal water systems, which we're not in the business of. But uh, they're very uh, very well versed in, in wastewater management and operations. They basically uh, would handle the operation of the treatment plants, and they would also would handle the operation of the collection system, which includes the uh, lift stations. Uh, we would pay them an annual fee of uh, $160,920. Uh, there would be added on costs as necessary relating to repairs uh, that would need to be made for the system. We're not anticipating anything like that in the first three years, even though things do break and you need to understand that. Uh, but the first three years
years should be minimal in, in that end from, from this perspective. Uh, the, uh, the agreement's rather straightforward. We have response time requirements for them. Just so you know, uh, there will be actual on-site representation for four hours a day, uh, you know, five days a week. Uh, the system is monitored 24-7 electronically through a SCADA system. Uh, so if there's any type of alarm or any, any type of burp in the plant, we're going to know about that and we can get a body here. The agreement itself says that they have the ability to respond no longer than two hours after getting a phone call in the event of an emergency. They can beat that. Uh, we felt uh, the two hours no more than is, is an adequate level, but their primary response person actually lives in Rogers, so they're very close and can get here rather quickly. Uh, they will have uh, contractors in place to, to handle any type of line breaks that we encounter. Uh, that's more than likely if you have a problem with the system you're going to end up dealing with is it, the line break. Uh, you typically don't have problems from an operational standpoint on the power on the, on the treatment plant itself. Uh, it's rather straightforward. Uh, we feel it's a good agreement. It's pretty comprehensive. Uh, they will be responsible as part of their base fee uh, for chemicals, which is a big expense uh, in the operation of the plant itself. Uh, we will be responsible for electricity. We need to be in charge of that, that component from, from that end. Uh, they'll, they'll provide the manpower, as I mentioned. Uh, they'll also be providing the, the normal uh, parts and, and equipment and things like that related to preventative maintenance. And again, any corrective maintenance gets billed on a separate schedule. Uh, if we choose, it's a three-year agreement, as we, we talked about. Uh, you know, if we, if we choose to get out of this agreement, we have the ability to get out of this agreement in the three-year period, depending on when we get out. Depends on whether we would you know, recoup them any, any of the startup costs that they incur. And that amount goes down to later into that three-year term. Period. I think it starts at 15 and goes all the way down to five uh, from that perspective. Um, we recommend approval of it. It's, it's been, a, it's been a, a good negotiation process and they're very excited to get on board. With the exception of the electricity, this is a turnkey contract? Yeah. yeah we, we've got some, we have some obligations to provide some, some minor things in the beginnings, but those are things we've already got. We've got to provide them with, with adequate storage space and quote unquote office space on site. All of those things are, are things that exist right now. Uh, so we, we tried to work through, we tried to literally break down uh, every piece of the operation for a three year period. There's preventative maintenance that will occur on a regular basis for the treatment plants and, and for the treatment uh, for the treatment plants and the lift stations. There's really not any preventative maintenance to speak of on the collection system itself. Anything that would need to be done with that would be considered a repair and would be billable Any further questions to Don, please? Don, would this company provide the pump truck necessary cleaning the lines? Is that their responsibility? We would get billed for that, but yes, they would line that up. That's that's a separate that's a separate service. And there will be some things on the line. There'll be some monitoring that we're going to be required to do for fish and wildlife, but will that'll be a separate bill. And that's typically the way those things work. That's a good question. Will they use any city-owned facility or equipment or personnel? No personnel and no city equipment. I mean, the treatment plant is, is, is city. Well, other, other than the no vehicles, itself. No vehicles, anything along those lines. And they're fully insured, uh, you know, as far as their, their liability insurance uh, as it relates to both spills as well as general operating liability. Okay. Obviously, if it's something that we caused, that led to a problem and or violation and the village obviously is, is on the hook in that situation. But if it's an operator error as a result of something they've done wrong, they obviously have responsibility. So we have no, no responsibility during the day no, sir. to, I mean, we will, to we will monitor, maintain anything. No, sir. We, we'll all be tied into the SCADA system. So we'll be monitoring what they're monitoring. Okay. okay. And understand those 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 things monitor 24-7. So, yeah. so we will... You know, they, they've, got, they've got staff that monitors those things 24 7. We'll have staff that will monitor it seven days a week, I'm sure, electronically. Uh, but that's just part of the day. That's part of our job. Got it. Thank you. Yes, sir. And you feel good about this company? Very much so. Very good reputation. Andy and, Andy and I went through the vetting process. They were very productive. Uh, they have very good reputation. Also, they have a good reputation with TC. Well, their their price for uh, their price is, is very uh, kind, uh, somewhat less than what we expected. It was less, right? Much less. Okay, I'm good. Any other questions to Don? I'll entertain a motion, please. Mr. Mayor, I move that we execute a services agreement with Jacobs CHQ and Hill relating to the provision.
division of management operation and maintenance services to the village of Salado West Tower System. Is there a second? Discussion? Do I hear the call to question? Question has been called. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, likewise. Passes. G. We need to get, we need to get Mike back in. Side. Discuss and consider possible action regarding a voluntary annexation petition submitted by the Salado Independent School District for the district's Williams Road property. Tom? Uh, you yeah. may skip to that. I'll come back. Okay, so this is the annexation for the Williams okay. Road property? It's G and H tied together. Okay. They're all, you know, they're all kind of intertwined. They're all annexation related matters. If you want to take Williams Road, would you take Williams Road up first? Yes, like I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is basically the uh, city's uh, effort to bring uh, Williams Road into the village limits. It would go from West Village Road all the way to 2484. It would uh, uh, basically extend the, the right of way uh, distance. And the, the purpose of this obviously is to be able to bring the high school and the new school site for the Salado ISD uh, into the village limits uh, so they can get wastewater. Uh, staff recommends approval. Questions, please, to John. Entertain motion, please. I move we approve the petition requesting an annexation of Salado ISD's Williams Road property. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Question. Question has been called. All in favor, raise your hand, please. Passes. Going back to G now on the other page. Discuss and consider possible action regarding a voluntary annexation petition submitted by the Salado Independent School District for the District Thomas Arnold Salado School Road property. Questions, please. Yes, sir, Mayor Justice, the last one dealt with the annexation of the school district's Williams Road property. Uh, this particular one deals with the annexation of the school district's Thomas Arnold and Salado School Road properties. Um, and there will be subsequent uh, actions, much like the last item relating to the right away. Staff recommends approval. Questions, Don? Entertain a motion. I move we approve the staff recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Motion been made and second. Have discussion? Question has been called. All in favor, raise your hand. I discuss and consider possible action regarding the proposed annexation of the Williams Road right of way from West Village Road to Farm to Market 2484. John? Yes, sir. Mayor, this is the annexation uh, of the Williams Road right of way. You've already uh, voted to accept the petition to annex the Williams Road School District properties. Uh, so it's before you tonight for consideration. This is needed to bring the school district properties in. Staff recommends approval. Questions, John? I entertain a motion, please. Move to approve the proposed annexation. Second. Second. Discussion? Question. Question has been called. All in favor, raise your hand, please. Passes. Jay, discuss and consider possible action regarding the proposed annexation of portions of Salado School Road between Thomas Arnold Road and West Village Road. John? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this particular item is the right-of-way for uh, Salado School Road. As we pointed out, that uh, 
our meeting last week. Uh, this is kind of an unusual uh, move. Uh, it is prescriptive easement, so later school road is uh, in, in part. And that is uh, because right now, if you look at Salado School Road as they got into surveying it, uh, they discovered that a portion of the Salado School Road is actually owned by the school district and uh, two portions of it are owned by the county. Uh, so obviously we we're annexing the school district property in, uh, and then we need to annex the, the county's right of way in. At some point in the future, after the annexation process is complete, we'll get the school district can eventually get that right of way straightened out to the point that it's fully dedicated right of way in my school district property. But that said, staff recommends approval. Questions, Don? Entertain a motion, please. I move we approve the proposed annexation of portions of the Salado School Road right away. Second. Motion to be seconded. Discussion, please. Question. Mr. Mayor, uh, you know, we've been skipping over these real quick, and it's like I've said the last time that we considered this, that this is a historic moment for us in, the, uh, in, this, in this room. We've been working on this a long time, way overdue and the school district's excited about it and so are we. That's a discussion. It's okay. And Mr. Ferguson certainly has expedited this process unbelievably so. Thank you Don for what you've done to expedite, expedite this long awaited process. Mayor, for the public certification, yes, these were on an agenda we had last week, uh, as you know, but uh, there was some uh, question about uh, supermajority being present or not, and to avoid any question, we put those back on this agenda just to nail it down. Okay. Question. question has been called. All in favor, raise your hand, please. Tell so us a lot of questions. This, anything else dealing with the school? No, sir. This is where you want to stop. It is. You don't have any other information? In there? No. Okay. Okay. Discuss and consider possible action regarding a request to authorize payment for unused holidays for Sergeant Matt Higgins. Mr. Mayor, our request would remove this item. We have a supermajority and approve this. For, for the record, if we could just go ahead and approve it again, that would be great. Questions to uh, questions to Doc. The situation for the public certification on this, yes, just so right. know, is the fact that Sergeant Hicks uh, was unable to take his uh, holiday time off because of staffing limitations at the time in the Perry Police Department. He obviously is needing, uh, he has requested this, and we think it's a very reasonable request, so we recommend it to him. Okay. I'll entertain a motion, please. Your Honor, I move that we uh, pay Sergeant uh, Matt Hicks uh, the unused holidays that he approved during his. Uh, his uh, with us. Not to exceed 96 hours. Not to exceed 96 hours. Discussion. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion. Question. Question has been called. All in favor, raise your hand, please. Passes. Well, that concludes the business of the regular board of all the We're going to adjourn the board of all the and uh, retire for an executive session. And one more time, I know you told us in your report, um, what are we going into this executive session? It's to uh, discuss personnel matters specifically, to discuss the potential employment of a police chief. And by law, we can do this. By law, yes. Okay. So I'll entertain a, uh, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. And you're going in under the personnel section. Uh, okay. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I move we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. We're going into 